This is part 1b of Basor, the original Messianic Gospel of Yeshua. Now the term Bar Enosh uh, in Hebrew, Ben Adam, was a, a, a term used by prophets uh, in humility to say, I'm merely a human being. But it became, especially in Aramaic, in the later period, as Aramaic began to be the language of the people, uh, it became a term that referred to this archetypal figure, the Messiah. Uh, and the first place we see it really strongly talked about is in the book of Enoch. This was a scripture of the Messianic Jews and of the early Christians. You will find the book of Enoch quoted in uh, the Christian epistle to Jude in uh, verses 14 and 15. It's written in Aramaic like the book of Daniel in Babylon in the first century of the uh, before the Christian era. And all the traditions of Ezekiel and Enoch and Isaiah were continued in the Babylonian school of Daniel. And this is where the, uh, the Son of Man messianic traditions were cultivated. And this particular text is translated from uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was very important to the Qumran community, the Essenes, in the century before the time of Yeshua. So it's from the Essene scriptorium at Qumran. Uh, of their version of the book of Enoch, which was a messianic book. So I will read to you from it. And there, Enoch is up in the heavens being shown all the revelations of heaven. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. That would be God. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness like one of the holy angels. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning the son of man, Bar Enosh, who he was, and whence he was, and why he sat with the head of days. And he answered and said unto me, This is the Son of Man, and it should say the sign of humanity, the new humanity, who hath righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness, and who revealeth all the treasures of that which is hidden, the Ratzim, the secrets. Because the Lord of Spirits, that was a messianic designation for God, hath chosen him, and whose lot hath the preeminence before the Lord of Spirits in uprightness for an eon of eons? That's olamim. That's for a huge, huge amount of time. And this Son of Man, whom thou hast seen, shall overturn the kings and the mighty from their seats, and the strong from their thrones, and shall loosen the reins of the strong and break the teeth of the evil ones. So this is the messianic concept of the Bar Inash, the Son of Man, and that which was used and espoused and the reference point for Yeshua. So the Baranash, the son of man, which really means the scion of humanity, the offspring of humanity, the son daughter of humanity, because in this case it doesn't it is it's not gender specific, means a new humanity. This is Paul's term. He talks about the old Adam and the new Adam. This is the new Adam. And uh, the Christ is the head of this, and he sees Yeshua as the firstborn of this new humanity. And this Baranash, this Messiah, is not an individual being. It's a corporate being. This new Adam, or new humanity, is a corporate being, just like Adam contained all the generations within him, and Adam was both uh, male and female. He contained Adam and Eve, and then Eve was separated. So the new humanity is a corporate being. Uh, the body of the Christ is the way it comes across in Christianity. The new humanity is anointed by God as a steward or heir of divine sovereignty. He's going to exercise God's sovereignty. He's going to sit at the right hand. He's going to be God's right hand. So humanity is coming of age. Humanity is not just going to play God. Humanity is going to act on behalf of God. And the new humanity the Baranash, the Messiah. That's the new humanity. That's the Christ. It's not one individual. It's the new humanity that's coming to birth, the spiritual humanity, soul by soul. So let's unspin this uh, version that we find in, the, in, 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 in the, the Gospels of Mark and Luke and Matthew about the Gospel that Yeshua was preaching. It says the time is fulfilled and the Kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. Well, what is the time? Well, in the, God, in the Greek New Testament, the word is kairos, season, cycle, age, eon. It's the olamim, the period of time, the age, the time cycles prophesied by Daniel for dominion of the beasts is, and the dark forces on earth is now coming to an end. That's what Yeshua is saying. The time is fulfilled. 
and the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, the word, again, as I pointed out, is malkuth. It doesn't mean kingdom, and that's a bad translation in Greek. It's basileion. But in Aramaic, it means the sovereignty of God, the sovereign rule, the authority, the presence, the will of God. It's not a kingdom. Remember, Yeshua said, uh, don't believe them when they say, lo here, lo there. He says, the 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 Malkuth, or the, quote, kingdom of God is spread out upon the earth, and men do not see it. He says, the kingdom of God, quote, is within you. Because God's universal sovereignty is everywhere. Uh, if I go to the deepest hell, God is there. Is at hand. Well, it's literally drawing near. It's not coming near in distance, in terms of distance, because the Malkuth is always present everywhere, but it's appearing it's becoming evident. It's manifesting to us in time. It's becoming real and visible to humanity on earth. God's unseen sovereignty is now being revealed to the world of mankind. And that sovereignty is the righteousness of uh, truth, beauty, mercy, compassion, all the names and characteristics of the way of God. Repent. Ooh. The word in Aramaic is nacham. It has nothing to do with what we think of as repent or feeling sorry for something or changing your mind. Nacham is the Aramaic root meaning to submit, submission of the lower to the higher. The New Testament Greek metanoia, which translated that badly, reflected the Gentile Christian conversion ethic, meaning change your mind, because that's what they were doing with Gentile Christians. They were having to teach them whole new things, and that's why Christianity became so doctrinal and belief-oriented. But Yeshua was not teaching beliefs and doctrines. And so the true meaning of Naham, which is to submit to heaven, uh, in fact, that's by the basic concept in Islam. Islam means to submit, was lost. And believe in the gospel. No, 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 no. The Aramaic word is from a triliteral root, A-M-N, from which we get Amen or Amen and Amen, Amuna, etc. It means to keep faith with, be faithful to. It's talking about fidelity and perseverance. The Greek word, pistis, which we finally translated as belief, completely distorted this uh, Aramaic Amen, Amuna, etc. and turned the basor of Yeshua into a belief system rather than radical fidelity and faithfulness and per perseverance to God's way and the interior guidance of God. The gospel, well, we know that's the basor, which is the proclamation of the coming to birth of a new spiritual humanity that will establish God's way on earth. Now, if we paraphrase then Yeshua's historical basor, we might do it like this. The great cycles of time during which evil forces have dominated humanity and ruled the earth and separated humanity from God are coming to an end as prophesied by Daniel, and the sovereign authority, the Malkuth, of God's wisdom, compassion, justice, and spiritual truth are now becoming manifest on earth, how? Through the spiritual rebirth of a new humanity, the Baryanash, to help all souls reclaim their divine heritage and reunite heaven with earth. That's the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage of the Baryanash. Then he gives the command, submit to heaven's way. He doesn't say, repent and believe in the gospel. He says, submit to heaven's way and keep faith with God's prophetic proclamation. So what does this mean for us in this age? It means that democratic government based on common welfare will eventually end the ancient forms of tyranny. It means that all humanity is growing soul by soul in the, into the archetype of a new and spiritual humanity. It means that humanity is appointed to act as God's right hand for governing the affairs of mankind and for both sustaining and improving divine garden of the natural universe. And these awesome responsibilities require ever advancing knowledge in sciences, not pseudosciences, and arts and social sciences used, responsi used responsibly for the benefit of all beings. In the YouTube presentations, I'm going to give short introductions to various topics that I discuss in detail in the Yeshua Seminar, which can be found at uh, wisdomseminars.org. You can find the other YouTube presentations by searching pre-Christian or by subscribing to the Lewis Kaiser channel. Uh, also, you will find available at the Wisdom Seminars site 
uh, my novel Yeshua the Unknown Jesus which simplifies and makes it possible for people who are not scholars to understand from uh, the perspective of a fictional novel that is based in historical reality the teachings of Yeshua. Uh, you can get it as an ebook to download if you want the published book it's available at Amazon.com and Lulu.com and online booksellers. There is also a 12-hour wisdom seminar that is available on the wisdom seminar site on recovering the historical and authentic teachings of Yeshua and it is also entitled Yeshua the Unknown Jesus.